I want to get into some of the things that we did to go from, to like reverse it and kind of build towards where we're at now. But Morgan, I want to toss to you on the, the three calibers of players and coming from your side of the, of the coin in your experience, guys that have no brand. Maybe they don't exist on social or they're just, you know, they don't post a whole lot. Or they, no one really knows who the player is or, or what they're about. What's your experience working with guys like that and trying to get them deals? And what kind of deals can you get those types of players? Yeah, I would say that anybody who's at an agency who has access to somebody who does their marketing, they need to have a sit down conversation with them and try and identify what we call our, your brand pillars, right? How, how do your teammates describe you? How would they describe you? Um, what are your interests? What are kind of the foundations of, what is the foundation kind of of who you are? That could be three, four, five things, but it needs to be very concise, clear, and it should be able to translate through all areas of, of your game, of your life. It's gotta be authentic too, right? right. To, to that individual. Like some guys just like to go out and fish and they're super low key, that's fine. Some guys, I mean, I think of Gronk as like the prototypical party guy, you know, and he right. kind of built a brand off that. They, they all can work. You know, you just gotta be a, kind of authentic to who the player is, right? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, it's, it's important because authenticity, again, comes through in what brand partnerships you you end up getting um, comes through in your social, in your everyday life. And a lot of times guys will have an easier time wanting to do those activations with brands or posts on social when it's something that they're doing anyway and that's natural. And so that's ultimately like the best fit, you know, is when both parties kind of fit um, yeah. together, so. What's it like when you're reaching out on behalf of someone who may want uh, a card deal or um, a local uh, event or signing or you know, some of these things and when you reach out to a brand and you have to kind of explain who the player is or what they're about like how do those conversations go is it an uphill I gotta imagine it's an uphill climb to try to Especially interest, I feel right? for baseball players. Yeah. Well, right, like, because baseball were, players aren't in the aren't in the spotlight. I mean, almost. They, yeah. Right. There are a ton of factors that go into this. Um, Oftentimes, though, you know, baseball players should actually be at an advantage because they are on TV more than any other uh, any other professional athletes are. Um, just given the number of games that are in a season, you would think that that would be a good thing. But um, a lot of times, I, I've gotten I've had many different responses when I talk to brands. They either don't know who the guy is, or he's not performing well, or he's in a poor market, or there's a lot of different aspects that go into you know. We don't have budget, so there's there's a lot of different things that brands will tell you when you're on a, a phone call with them. Um, yeah. And a lot of times too, it's in this business, it is it's all about you know relationships. And sometimes the first call that you have with a brand is just you're trying to learn more about what they're looking for, and you're listening. And they may uh, they may tell you some things that you can then use you know in your negotiations with them later on down the road. But it is important to kind of ask them how you can help them, how your client can help them kind of reach their goals because ultimately their job is to sell product or whatever it may be. And if your athlete, if your client is not helping them do that, then they're kind of struggling to see the value, I think, so. Is it, so you, you mentioned not performing well on the field and also uh, not in a big market and some of these things. So I think the driving force behind that is just the visibility, right? Brands want to know that when they're working with someone, it's getting their product in front of a large net of potential buyers, right? Absolutely. I think too, I'll, I'll say this, um, that those factors I listed are just some things that brands will say to us, but we know ultimately what the guy does with his personal brand on his social, that can trump a lot of things that can take a lot of those no's away immediately. There's case studies that have been done. Um, there's a guy that was drafted in the last round of the NBA draft, but he got one of the most lucrative shoe deals because of what he was doing on his socials. So that matters. Um, as we all know at this table, most companies, most, most fans rather, would rather follow an individual player rather than a team account. So when you look at um, when you look at all of those factors together, I think that, you know, if, as long as you're kind of taking care of your business on the field, but there's a lot to be said and a lot to, a lot of money to be made for guys that understand how to do social right, how to do their branding right. So, yeah. yeah. 
So before we jump into kind of the second group of players, which is this kind of mixed bag, they have either a bad brand or kind of this mixed brand, what are some of the deals that guys with no brand right now can see? Do they, are they getting card deals? Are they getting shoe deals? Is it hard to get them these types of deals? Are they seeing national TV ads? Are they like, what, what kind of, what, what part of the spectrum are they on as far as that goes? So guys that don't really have a strong presence on social, um, it's, it is, it is difficult. You have the guys that don't really have a social, but they are, you know, all-star caliber player. Um, those, those deals do happen because of what they're doing on the field. Um, the number one question I got asked at my last job at an agency was, how do I get a car deal? How do I get a shoe deal? The car deals, um, those happen in kind of three uh, waves of a guy's career. A lot of times it is going to be, you know, when a guy gets drafted and there's obviously like different rounds that um, companies will, they'll look at guys you know, in certain, you know, one through rounds one through five. Um, but prospect deals, rookie card deals when a guy debuts. And again, it kind of just depends on who the guy is and what and how much the offer is going to be. Um, and then there's other opportunities for a guy when he's um, a vet to get a deal. But outside of that, those are kind of, they're slotted. So they're, you kind of know going in what, yeah. what a guy's going to get. Um, and then equipment deals, again, I can't tell you how many winter meetings I've been in where the conversation with um, equipment companies is, maybe more or less dependent on what he's doing on social. Um, again, you'll hear kind of the, you know, he's not in the right market or he's, you know, a middle reliever and it's just not enough TV time for us. But outside of that, they're looking at his presence on online as well. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, brand deals, um, endorsements. There's opportunity out there for, you know, paper posts. Um, but national deals are really reserved for the guys that like you see that have kind of that complete package, right? They're active on social, they're doing their job on the field and they just, they're, they're in a good market, whatever it may be. But yeah. yeah. 